Hey guys, it's me, the Bombay Chef Varun Namdar, and welcome to Rajshri Food. In the curry world, most curries have some nostalgia, some memory attached to it. It could be your grandmother's recipe, your grandfather's recipe, some hired loom recipe, some recipe coming down from generations to generations. It has some story, but there are some curries that actually have no story. They are generally a restaurant chef's gift to the culinary world. Today's recipe is one such recipe. This is a restaurant style tofu curry. Let's begin. When I mean a restaurant style tofu curry, I mean an Indian restaurant style tofu curry for which I'm going to make an Indian curry base, especially for this recipe. Now, I'm also using tofu in this recipe, which is of Japanese origin. So an Indian curry with a Japanese plant-based protein. How interesting. Now, there are several kinds of tofu that are available on the shelf. You, of course, have a classic tofu, which was available for years. Then you have a hard tofu, a extra firm tofu, a firm tofu, and then you have a silken tofu, which is nice and absolutely smooth, which is perfect if you want to make something like a scrambled tofu, or something which really has delicate uh, nature in, in, in its recipe. But this one is slightly firm, it's slightly hard because it's perfect for curry bases. Now imagine you have a curry which is boiling and then you throw in these pieces of tofu. You could pan fry these or you could just poach them in the curry for that nice subtle flavor. So I'm using this. Now, what is tofu? It's important for us to understand. This tofu is condensed soya milk which is inoculated inside the container or inside the packet itself. Whereas the classic tofu that we all know of is generally soy milk which is curdled with the use of an acid. It could be vinegar, it could be lemon or anything of that kind. It could also be citric acid crystals. And then you tie it in a mustard cloth, apply a little bit of weight pressure and you get that firm slab. That is a classic tofu. Now there's also an ingredient called tempeh. Now tempeh is of Indonesian origin. Now what that is, let me tell you through the recipe, otherwise I'll just keep talking. But before that, let me begin with the curry paste for which of course I'm going to use a wok now you could also make this in a kadhai you could use a pressure cooker choice is completely yours now what's important in this recipe is to ensure that the curry paste or the curry base is perfectly cooked because then you're not going to touch it again with spices or salts or anything of that kind first things first oil in a wok like I said you can also use a pressure cooker or a pressure pan or a kadhai for a recipe like so slightly more on the oil bit. In case you want to keep this refrigerated as a curry base, you use slightly more oil. Of course, whatever precipitates on top can be removed later, but it just kind of increases the keeping quality while being refrigerated. Allow the oil to heat on high flame. Once the oil heats up, you can idly also begin with garam masala. You can add in bay leaves and cinnamon and cloves and black peppercorn. You can go on and on and on and personalize the recipe. What I like to do is avoid all of that because I like a clean mouthfeel. Add in garam masala in its powder form and that just kind of makes your life easy. Let me add in sliced red onions. And we're gonna cook this on high flame of course with a little bit of salt to ensure that this slightly just kind of begins to turn brown in color. We're not turning it golden brown, we're not sauteing it, not leaving it translucent. Just ensure that slight bit golden edges come on this and then we are done. We stir this well. And in case you're wondering which salt I used, this is regular table salt, not salt of Zakanda. Once the onions start getting a light golden brown shade, I'm going to lower the flame and add in tomatoes, which are roughly cut, of course. Saute this well. Once the tomatoes just kind of begin to cook, I'm going to add in dried red chilies, snip the stalk off, and just roughly break these into pieces. Along with this, cloves of garlic, peeled in this case, fresh green chilies for spice, I'm using gram flour, which is unroasted. I'm adding this in this recipe so that it gets that natural thickness. Now, of course, there is onion in this recipe, which also is a thickener, but I'm adding in some gram flour. It'll cook, it'll get roasted all at the same time. Another layer of flavor, which is coriander seeds, and this also works as a thickener in Indian curry bases. Followed by turmeric powder, coriander leaves, and that's about it for now. Let's saute this. 
and ensure that all the raw flavor goes away. Very important. We need to toss this well and ensure that everything is perfectly cooking. Time to add in garam masala in its powder form like I said earlier. And along with this, sugar to just kind of bring out the flavor of other ingredients and balance the tartiness in the recipe. Let's mix this well. And with this, of course the flame. Allow this mixture to cool down completely. After which, we're going to run this into a nice, fine and smooth curry paste. This mixture has cooled well. Let's transfer this in a blender jar and grind this to a smooth paste. With this, our curry paste is done and ready. It's nice and smooth. That's exactly how we want this. Time to now use the same wok or the same pan the same kadhai, the same pressure pan, whatever we have. And to this, I'm going to add in. If you remember, the earlier spice mix was made using oil. At this stage, I'm adding ghee. Allow the ghee to just kind of warm up. The ghee has heated up. Let's add in cumin seeds. A little more of the cumin seeds. And to this, I'm adding in a combination of capsicum, onions and tomatoes, all in the form of petals. Now I'm adding this just so that the curry or the gravy, if you make it thicker, it of course becomes a gravy. If you add in water, it becomes a curry. So that's how thin the line is between the two recipes. It's important to bring in that little bit of a crunch or that little bit of a bite because tofu otherwise is mushy, it's soft. So this adds in that element and that mouthfeel. Let's add in the curry paste as well. Let's stir this. So this in a lot of ways is the gravy. Now, because we're making our curry, of course we need to add in liquid. You can add in vegetable stock, you can add in water. Choice is completely yours. But because this is so well flavored, water will just work perfectly. It's like a cup full. Because remember the fact that it has three thickeners. It has gram flour, it has onions, and it also has coriander seeds. All work as thickeners in Indian curries. Let's stir this well. Allow this to come on a roll boil. That's where the ghee will also start precipitating from the sides. Moving on to adding in soya. Now the soya that I'm using for this recipe, and I've told you that before, is a silken tofu, a soya in the form of a tofu, as simple as that. Now this one is a semi-hard or a firm tofu. Very important for a recipe like this because you do not want it crumbled in the curry. Now, it's important to cut this like so, like a horizontal cut. The next is to cut it like so, very gently. After this, we turn the plate around like so and cut it into cubes or dices. Now this, in a lot of ways, is one of the most simplest ways in which you can cut a tofu. And this is of course without breaking it or without crumbling it. This is one of the simplest ways of handling a tofu. And trust me, you'll get a nice dice every time you cut it like this. Let's add this straight into the curry which is now bubbling away to glory. Now is the time to stir this extremely gently. Now, of course, without the use of ladles, if you can manage. If not, then stir it with very light, gentle hands. One quick roll boil, and with this, your restaurant-style tofu curry is done and ready. Now, you can have this with chapatis, you can have this with naan, rotis, fulkas, jeera rice. The choice is completely yours. Make this for your family, make this for your friends, and stay connected. Ranshree.